Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you are watching from. I'm Tan Min Min, and for the Robo Cup Singapore Open 2023, I'm participating in the RCAP Coast Space Autonomous Driving Under 19 category. About me, I'm a Year 5 student from Raffles Institution, Singapore, and robotics has been my passion since I was 10. In 2020, I participated in Robo Cup for the very first time, and since then, I have participated in four categories and made tons of presentation videos. Some of my other interests include anything about STEM, research, and playing the piano. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the challenge. Here is a sample autonomous driving map. We can subdivide the challenge into four main mini challenges. First, achieving a fast and smooth line tracking, especially at bends, in order to move from one waypoint to the next efficiently. Second, achieving fast and accurate turning at junctions, in order to minimize the time taken for turning, as well as ensure the robot catch the line for further line tracking. Third, since this challenge will need to be coded under a certain time limit, we need to reduce hard coding that will require some form of calibration, especially at areas with traditionally the most hard coding involved, turning at junctions. Fourth, deriving the shortest path with least complexity using search algorithms by assigning more weight to the longer or more complex line sections. In this presentation, I'll be focusing on the first three mini-challenges, as the last mini-challenge has already been sufficiently discussed in my previous autonomous driving videos. Mini-challenge 1, fast and smooth line tracking. I use the proportional integral derivative or PID line tracking algorithm. I determine the error, which is the distance between the robot's current and optimum position using inputs from the six infrared or IR sensors located at the front underside of the robot. Let's take a look at the IR sensors more closely. Since the optimum position occurs when the line lies between the middle two IR sensors, its error is zero. The errors for all the other cases can be determined as shown, with greater displacements from the middle having a proportionally larger error. For example, if the robot is positioned as such on the line, with the line positioned in between the second and third IR sensors, the error incurred is negative 0.4. Proportional takes this error value and multiplies it by a constant to contribute to the urgency of turning. Next, to ensure that the robot is following the line, its average optimum position should be in the middle. So the sum of errors should be equal to zero since all positive errors should cancel the negative ones. Therefore, integral takes the sum of errors and multiplies it by a constant to contribute to the urgency of turning, thereby reducing steady state error. The last component of PID is derivative, which is the rate of change of error. Since the time interval is the same between iterations of the PID, we can closely approximate the rate of change of error by taking the difference between the current and last errors. Adding this change in error multiplied by a constant to the final urgency of turning will reduce overshoots and the occurrence of oscillations. Summing proportional, integral, and derivative up, we get the final urgency of turning, which we can plug into these two equations to derive the speeds for the two wheels. If the robot is turning left, that is, when the urgency of turning is negative, the speed for the faster wheel is wheel right, while that for the slower wheel is wheel left, and vice versa. However, the tuning of the PID constants is not one size fit all. With only PID with the same constants applied to the whole challenge map, the robot may oscillate too much at straighter line sections, or run off track at larger bands or more complex line sections. Therefore, to circumvent this issue, I introduced a speed and constant control function which will increase the robot's speed and decrease the PID constants at straighter line sections and vice versa. Mini Challenge 2 Fast and Accurate Turning at Junctions In the past, I have mostly relied on calibrating my wheel left and wheel right values to turn at junctions. However, this has proved to be really time consuming, especially if the first junction you can test is so far away from the start line. As such, I devised a method to calculate the wheel left and wheel right values for the fastest turning possible. 
This can be achieved if the robot rotates and translates at the same time, as both actions take time. So I decided that the shortest path would be the circumference of a quarter circle or radius R, with R being equal to the distance between the wheels at the position where the robot is sensing the marker and the intended new line here. Therefore, after the robot turns to face a new line, the robot is guaranteed to be centralized. So then, how do we determine the wheel left and wheel right values from this radius? Let's take a closer look at the robots. If both wheels turn at the same speed in opposite directions, R is equal to zero. While if one wheel turns at maximum speed and the other at zero speed, R is equal to L divided by two, with L being the width of the robot. And of course, if both wheels turn at the same velocity, the R is infinite. And this reminded me of the arc tangent graph shown here. After calculating the urgency of turning, I plug it into these two equations to derive the speed for the two wheels, similar to the two equations discussed in PID line tracking. That said, in the real world, the quarter circle path may not be the shortest possible path, since we may need to account for a moment of inertia the robot would have to overcome should it have a sudden angular acceleration. Therefore, the path taking the shortest possible time may be closer to a cyclone instead, with the physical intuition behind it similar to that of the brachistochrome problem. Mini Challenge 3. Reduce Calibration at Junctions Of course, the algorithm discussed earlier does not calculate the duration the robot should turn for, which in turn will affect whether the robot actually lands on the line for future line tracking to occur reliably. This duration requires much calibration, and the robot is not guaranteed to turn to the same fixed spot every single time either. Therefore, I decided to further split the robot's motion at junctions into two parts. The first part is for the robot to turn slightly such that its IR sensors are entirely displaced from any of the lines. The second part is for the robot to continue turning with the same radius until the middle IR sensors sense the line. In other words, when the robot catches the line. This means that the robot is centralized on a new line for reliable line tracking to take place. I also added a condition for the robot to be facing the correct direction using the robot's compass, or rotation Z value, to ensure that the robot did not catch the wrong line. So you may be wondering, what is the goal of doing the R-Type Coastbase Autonomous Driving Challenge? Well, there are many real-world applications. Many of us may have come across vehicles using the Advanced Driver Assistance System or ADAS, which helps drivers park or drive on roads. ADAS uses car sensors to figure out its position on the road or any obstacles around it, thereby preventing accidents, especially those arising from human error. So here's a brief history on ADAS. Did you know that the first version of cruise control, which allows the driver to set a chosen speed for a car, was invented by prolific inventor Ralph Keeter, who was visually impaired? This cruise control system is regarded to be the start of ADAS. In 1995, Hughes Research Laboratories and Delco Electronics developed a radar-based forward collision avoidance system. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging, which principles are similar to the ultrasonic sensor found in the coast-based robots, except that it uses radio waves for distance detection. In 2008, Volvo introduced a city safety automatic emergency braking, which evolved into a pedestrian detection with full auto brake system launched in 2010. This system uses radar and cameras to warn a driver if a pedestrian steps out in front of the car and then brakes automatically if the driver fails to stop. In the near future, we may even see a greater usage of self-driving vehicles, just like the Coastbase robot in this autonomous driving challenge. Autonomous navigation also has many applications in search and rescue operations and for other forms of vehicles such as aeroplanes, drones, or even spacecraft. And with that, I have come to the end of my Archive Co-Space Autonomous Driving Under-19 sharing. I would like to thank the RoboCup Singapore Open Organizing Committee for giving us the opportunity to participate in this challenge. I also hope this video has helped you in one way or another in your co-space journey. Thank you for your kind attention and support.